But Venepol strikes. He's going away. It's one meter. It's two meters. And now if Venepol puts in the hammer blow and starts to ride away. Welcome to Liège Baston Liège 2023. This is the 109th edition of cycling's oldest monument, first held back in 1892. And it could well be historic, as Tadej Pogacar looks to become just the third man to complete the Ardennes hat trick following his victories at the Amstel Gold Race and Flesh Wallon. But the Slovenian star is up against a formidable opponent on Sunday, last year's winner and the reigning world champion Remco Evenepoel. The Belgian's back from altitude training in Spain to defend his title. I think uh, Remco should be more under pressure if, uh, for the for the Liège because uh, yeah he he's coming off altitude uh, after break and uh, he won last year so uh, and yeah I already I already have one monument this year so yeah I am I'm quite relaxed for tomorrow and we see I will see how the race develops and then uh, try to do the best in the final. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, excited to race, not to, uh, to fight anybody, just excited to start a race and uh, yeah, it's uh, one month without competition so I'm happy to finally race again and uh, especially in this race with the rainbow jersey is going to be special. Mm. Pagatcha and Evanapool are certainly the big favourites, but that doesn't mean the other 170 riders are just here to make up the numbers. There's always a way to win. Uh, in a bike race you never know really what could happen. It's such a long race as well. so. Uh, it's all about conserving energy better than everyone else and you can be the strongest rider in the world but if you don't use your energy well then uh, you might fall off pace in the last last you know, 20 30k 258 kilometers over four and a half thousand meters of elevation gain it's brutal the majority of the 11 climbs come in the final 100k starting with the Côte de mont le -Soir. It's then over famous names such as the Côte de Stocker, the Col de Rosier and the Côte de la Redoute before the final showdown on the Côte de la Roche au Faucon, which tops out just 13k from the finish line. Well, the big news from the early part of the race was that Tadej Pogacar was forced to abandon. The Slovenian was caught up in a crash with Mikel Honoré after 84.5 kilometers, and he injured his wrist, ending his hopes of the Ardennes treble. Before that incident, 11 riders got into the breakaway, opening up a gap of around four minutes on the peloton. Among them were Georg Zimmermann and Johan Mainz, who got into the move at Flesh Vallon in midweek, plus Paul Orsola, who was on the attack here last year, and breakaway regular Simone Velasco. There was also Jason Osborne, the former Olympic rower, who moved into professional cycling after he won the eSports World Championships. Lebert, Van der Berg, De Vachenus, Balmer, Apers and Carretero completing that group of 11 riders. With Pagaccia out of commission, it was Sudal Quickstep doing the pacing on behalf of Evanapool in the peloton and they brought the gap down to under three minutes before the climbs started in earnest. The pace just creeping up as the favourites began to set themselves for the business end of proceedings. The former world champion, Julian Alaphilippe, setting the tempo for Sudal Quickstep as lots of riders started going backwards. Liège Baston Liège, after all, is a real race of attrition. The breakaway also being thinned out as Jan Tratnik attacked from the peloton, the Slovenian followed by Magnus Sheffield and Valentin Maduas. Some of the big names starting to struggle, including Enric Maas and Sergio Higuita. Mikel Lander, who was third at Flesh Vallon in midweek, also dropped. Well, Madouas soon sat up as Tratnik and Sheffield caught Balmer, who had been dropped from the breakaway. At this point, there were only six riders left up at the front. And six would become five on the Côte de Stocker as Tratnik continued to motor on alone. The Jumbo Visma man slowly but surely closing that gap on the leaders. An impressive debut showing from Tratnik, who's been preparing for the Giro with Primoz Roglic. He eventually caught the breakaway and continued to set the pace on the Col du Rosier. Only Velasco and Osborne were able to match him, although the Germans soon cracked. Further back, Sudal Quickstep was still pacing hard for Evenepoel. No more Alaphilippe, but the world champion still had Louis Fafaka and Ilan van Wilder in support. The Belgian squad continuing to pile on the pressure, meaning the gap to the two leaders was quickly down to just a handful of seconds. Onto the race's most famous climb, the Côte de la Redoute, where Tratnik and Velasco were caught. Breakaway finally over. Van Vilder putting in a monster turn for Evanapool, who was clearly getting ready to strike. 
Here he goes. The strike happens. He played a little bit. Pitcock immediately goes with the acceleration, uh, but the gap starts to go. The head of Pitcock drops. Venapol strikes. He's going away. It's one meter. It's two meters. And now Venapol puts in the hammer blow and starts to ride away. Tom Pidcock was just about holding on to Evenepoel's wheel after La Redoute, but he was unable to give the Belgian a turn and said goodbye on a short rise a few kilometres later. Evenepoel soaring away just as he did a year ago and quickly time trialling his way into a one minute lead. The other riders seemed to accept that they would be battling it out for second place. The defending champion soaking up the applause from the Belgian fans on the final climb, La Roche au Faucon, while further back, Ben Healy attacked from the chase group. The Irishman looking to add to his second place last week at the Amstel Gold Race. Santiago Buatraga was able to follow unlike Pavel Sivakov, but Pidcock managed to get across for the Ineos Grenadiers. These three riders set to contest the remaining two podium places, with a rampant Remco already starting to celebrate on the run into the edge. Remco Evenepoel conducts his own celebration. The world champion wearing number one. He joins the greats of Belgium. He joins Eddy Merckx as a back-to-back -back victor of Liège, Baston Liège. Uh, he puts his fingers up. It's two wins in Liège, Baston Liège. He's ready for the Giro d'Italia. Remco Evenepoel wins. That is now two appearances and two victories for Evan Poel at La Doyenne, and it's the first time the 23-year-old has won while wearing the rainbow jersey. Evan Poel showing he's ready for his upcoming clash with Roglic at the Giro d'Italia after taking his fourth win of the season, and it was a team masterclass from Sudal Quickstep, giving them something to celebrate after an underwhelming classics campaign. I have to thank my team for this... Uh for this beautiful victory because they uh, they pulled off a great show uh, working for me from the start and uh, yeah it's uh, it's their victory as well uh, but I'm just so happy to take uh, two out of two here in Liège it's uh, an amazing feeling especially with this beautiful jersey. Evan Apoul coming home over a minute clear of Pidcock and Buatrago who both make the podium of a monument for the very first time. Healy had to settle for fourth ahead of the French pair Madouas and Guillaume Martin well, Mark here, she rounded out the top 10 for UAE after they lost Pogaccia. Today was all about Remco Evenepoel, though, the first man to go back to back at Liege Baston Liege since Michele Bartoli in the late 1990s. He will now look to imitate the great Eddie Merckx, among others, by trying to complete his Liege hat trick in 2024.